All right, my name is Paul Martin. I do the, uh, I do the specialty projects and uh, restorations here at Gerstner, and we're going to do the third part, kit chest. Uh, this is the, we're gonna be talking about the drawers. The drawers are really the center of the Gerstner case. Long ago, Harry Gerstner figured out that if you put the metal machinist tools into a wooden drawer, they won't rust. That was really where the whole the whole box came from, and that's what you're going to get here. Now, there there are these are specific pieces. There is a front, a back, a right, and a left. What you do is take them out of the box and figure out which is which, and lay them out before you start trying to glue them up. Again, we're going to do a dry fit. So let's take one of the smaller drawers and figure out which are which. Obviously, these are larger drawers. This is a smaller. There's a front, which is the hardwood piece. Put that there. Then there's a back. That's going to be roughly that same size. It not, notice there'll, there'll be a different size here. That's not right. We're making the same size here. Look for the same size. You'll notice there's a cut in here, a slot. That's where that drawer bottom is going to go. There's a right and a left. So if I'm looking at it here like this, this would be on the left. This one would be on the right, my right. Here like that. Again, the slot would go on the bottom. Now, there we are. That's, that's, those are the pieces. So the first thing we want to do is to fit them together. Like with the box, you want to do a dry fit. Don't put a bunch of glue on it and start it right away, but a dry fit. And one thing I can tell you here while we're on the subject of fitting these together, this is called a tongue and groove joint. The reason that tongue and groove and, and all joinery here, part of, the, part of the problem of putting pieces of wood together is that end grain won't glue against cross grain. This would be a, a regular flat glue joint. This here is the end grain. End grain doesn't glue. So you have to figure out some sort of a way that you can slot them together, make up extra glue surface. This is called joinery. Uh, in this case, it's a tongue in a groove joint. Others are dovetail joints uh, or splines of one sort or another. But this is indeed the Gerstner custom uh, tongue and groove joint. That's the same one they've been using since, uh, since the beginning. Also, it all goes together sideways. If this is the front of the drawer, it comes in and out like this, in and out of the box like this. We put it together, and that would be clamp it sideways. And the reason for that is that over the years, the drawer will hold together. If you were, you're always pulling it out this way, uh, you want to set it up so that it holds together that way. If you were to just glue it on this way, you would pull it out. Perhaps the drawer would, co would come unglued. It would break after a while. So what we want to do is set it up sideways. Try this out. Line up, line up these, the, that groove. That's where the drawer bottom is going to go. Line that up and try to fit the whole thing together without glue. Now, you'll find that it doesn't go together very easily. These are very snug fits. And again, the, the real secret here is to take a bit of sandpaper and to clean off the edges. Just take some of the fuzz that from, comes from the saw, clean the edges, and it'll fit right into the slot. Just like that. Clean out the slot. Just, when you look at it, you can see the saw marks right inside there. And that's what's going to hang you up. 
make it nice and clean, and it'll go together. One bit of caution here, you don't want to, when you fit this together and you're taking it apart, take it apart directly sideways. Don't twist it like this. If you start, if you come apart and twist it like this, you could break the tongue off like that. Or if you take this off and go pull like that, that would, that would break it. So you want to go, you want to pull it off directly. And that's what will happen. That's what it will look like. Just like that. It'll all fit together. Try it out, and that's good. Then we'll take it apart. After we know that everything's going to fit, take it apart and put some glue. This is just regular white glue. No big deal. Uh, we use an assembly white glue here at the shop. You can use whatever you use on your other projects. The most important part about glue is that you get a good even covering and you don't get you get enough of a clamp and not too much of a clamp. You want glue in the joint, but you don't want it to squeeze out of the joint because then there won't be enough glue to do the job. Nice even covering. You can have the best glue in the world, but if you don't have an even covering and it's not touching the wood, then that's not working. Likewise, you can have the best glue in the world, and if you squeeze it out of the joint, then it's nothing in there. Nice even covering. I'm going to drop it in there. Now's a good time to keep an eye on the inside, make sure that it's nice and clean here. It's a lot easier to take the glue off, little drops of glue, take it off with a damp rag rather than let it dry and let it set up. We'll drop the, uh, the bottom of the drawer is going to go in here. You can see it's coming to form here. Slots on the bottom, the two grooves here where those tongues are going to go. Fits in sideways, straight down. If you want to take a look at it, make sure that then. What I'm doing is fitting it all together now, making sure that everything works before I clamp it. That's it. Now we'll take the clamps. I've got some of these great old clamps. I think I was saying on one of the other videos, one of the one of the fun parts about working at Gerstner here is you get to use these great old tools. Wonderful old things. Guys, guys worked on machines and machinery all around. And they use Gerstner boxes. These same clamps have been around for the whole time. Big fun. It really is a good idea to, do, to use a clamp. Now, it is theoretically possible to put it together if you don't have the clamps and you want to try to do it without the clamps, that's okay. You don't necessarily have to have them. Uh, you can pile up books or weights or something like that, pushing down on them. But the clamps really do make it a little bit easier. I'm going to sneak up on it here. Maybe the thing to do is to bring this over to the other side. That way I've got some Nice and tight. Now the real secret to these things, like with the like with the boxes, is to make sure it's nice and square. 
take your square, drop it in, make sure that everything is going to is going right. If it's not square, it won't go in and out of the box easily. So double check your square. Any time you can think of it, any way you can think of it, set it up so that you can look for that square. It's not hard to get because the the parts are assembled. Uh, there's there's uh, they're uniformly assembled. So all you really have to do is put it together, and you'll find that it, for the most part it's square. But it doesn't hurt to double check it. And once that's set, then you'll be able to just fit that in. Let's do one of the big ones. All right, now we're going to start and do one of the larger drawers. Same idea. The hardwood is the front, then the poplars at the back or the sides. Now, again, you want to lay out the pieces and make sure that you've got the right ones going. Notice this side here is shorter, so that side would not be part of that drawer. This one is, so that's the side to this drawer. Pretty simple. Again, look for the slots. All right, this is going to be, I'm looking at this now. This would be the right side. This one here, left side. There's a right and a left, a front and a back. Again, we're going to go at it. We're going to put this together sideways. Let's see now, how would I show this? Here? This would be going here like this. Oh, let's try it. Let's make sure that everything is good. Dry fit. There's a fit. Okay. Back. It's a good fit. Slide the bottom in there like that. And another piece will go in here like this. So we know that it's going to work. Everything lines up, it's going to fit. Now I see a little bit of fuzz from, and again, we want to pull this apart directly. I see a little bit of fuzz along this part here. That's another one that can get in the way. Just like, just like the tongues, just sand it off, smooth it down. That'll make the assembly a lot easier. Nice even coat. Now, again, line this slot up because that's where the drawer bottom is going to go. So you don't want to necessarily take the line from here. And this is actually designed to drop down just slightly, again, for drawer fitting. So just the center of that is right there. Make sure that's the, what you're looking for. All right. Here's the back. That slot would be in the wrong. You want that to go like that. See? The bottom is going to follow along. This one there. in here. 
there really isn't any upside or downside to the masonite. Sometimes folks will put the shinier side down, but it really doesn't matter. You're going to glue in the felt on top there anyway, so it doesn't matter. All the surfaces nice and even. Sometimes folks will take a little bit of glue and put that into the grooves as well. You're certainly welcome to. It's not necessary. Um, you can, if you want, you can put some glue in along the base, but that might not be all that desirable. Sometimes it's a good idea to let the let that masonite float. That way the drawer can expand and contract. If, it, if it's all glued together in the bottom, then it can develop a twist. See right now, I want to get that right there. You've got a little bit of open time with the glue, so you, if you if you don't if it doesn't if it doesn't get lined up completely right right away, just move it around a little bit, and that's good. So there's a good lineup, just like that, and then again we'll take the clamps. Again, notice that the whole drawer is clamped together this way. That way the action will be that it moves in and out. I'm now standing at the back of the box. This would be the front of the box, so you would pull the drawer out like that. Notice that it's clamped in this way. So if it were to loosen at all, it would not break apart. It wouldn't pull out that way. Then you could just reclamp it, put it together here like that. Be fine. Again, double check the square. Drop the square right in there. Take a look at it. Make sure it's all right. In this case, I see that I want to move this just slightly. There it is. That's got it. And that's the drawer. Now, this is what it looks like when when these come out of the clamps, depending on the glue that you're using. Sometimes it's just five minutes, other times it's longer. They'll go into the box. Here's a completed drawer. Now what you find once you take it out of the clamps is that it's not going to exactly go straight in just like that. It has to be fit. We give you just a little bit more material than you need. This will be on the top here. Sand this down nice and smooth so that that's a good, nice, smooth piece there like that. See that? This will be just, you actually sand this off. You want to have a little bit of gap here. 
You don't want the drawers to rub on each other. You want them to move in and out easily, but you don't need a whole lot of space there either. So they all go like that. When you take them out of the clamp, you might find that they just don't get in. They're almost too wide. Take your sandpaper, bring that down a little bit like that. Sand it here, sand it here. Make it so that it goes in. It should move in easily. A little bit of action. Then you look here. If, it, if it's touching the top one, sand it down a little bit, and you'll find that all the way through. The mark of a really nicely done cabinet is that all the gaps are the same. All the way around here, all these gaps. So when you look at it, all the gaps are the same. It's uniform. You don't want a whole lot of gap between this one and not a whole lot of gap over here. You want everything to be nicely, nice uniform. Um, there's something here called a tail. Notice that the back of the drawer is a little bit longer. It adds a half an inch, and some of our larger cases that can be as much as just three quarters of an inch. The idea with the tail is that it holds the drawer so that you can see everything that's in it. If this went right to the back, you'd, only, you'd have it, it would look something like this. And then if there were some little pieces, small tools, small parts in the back, it's difficult to get them. That tail allows you to pull the drawer out, stay right where it is, and uh, you get full access to the drawer. Same thing as here. See, the tail allows that. That's what that's about. It's not really wasted space. Although it's sometimes it seems like that. Right there. See? That's the way that goes. With these drawers, after you fit them, you'll find that they go best in a particular spot. This drawer will fit this spot better than it will fit this spot. So one of the ways that you want to take care of that is to take the drawer out, use your pencil, and put a mark there. And you can, you can figure out any way that you want to mark them. Um, right, left, here we use numbers. Uh, this would be the three drawer, so it's one, two, three, four. And you can figure that out. One of the fun parts of when we do restorations is we'll take, we'll take the drawers out and say a box that's built in 1950 or 1940, look, and the guy had written the number here. So we get to see the writing from a guy who built the box 50 years ago. Fun. Number of the drawers. This concludes our video on drawer assembly and fit. We hope you found it helpful and that you're well on your way to completing your own Gerstner chest. The next part of this series will be on sanding your Gerstner kit chest. If you have any questions regarding this material or on anything Gerstner related, please call or email us. Or check out the Gerstner Forum, which is loaded with all sorts of helpful information and can be found at GerstnerUSA.com. Thanks for watching.